Hey everyone, this is Bridget with Horse Auctions USA and I just wanted to pop on here and give you guys a quick little uh, online bidding video tutorial uh, for using Horse Auctions USA at Lebanon Valley Livestock's pony sale this weekend. And this will actually apply to all of the Lebanon Valley livestock horse sales. Um, but tomorrow is the pony special. Um, so we'll kind of go over all of that. And uh, we're super excited to be at Lebanon Valley. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Horse Auctions USA, this is going to kind of give you a really um, concise but thorough overview of how to navigate the site, what to expect for the online bidding, um, and kind of cover like the most frequently asked questions. Uh, Victoria is there at Lebanon Valley now, and she will be taking care of everyone on Saturday. Um, she'll be live streaming, um, and she'll be the one taking your bids. She'll take great care of everyone. Um, on a fun side note, um, I never, ever, ever missed Lebanon Valley when I lived in the Northeast, and I am in the Midwest now um, and looking at all the beautiful ponies and horses that they have for Saturdays making me making me miss it even more so um, lots of quality horses and ponies um, the ponies they've got every size uh, make sure you check out the catalog um, and they'll start the horse um, portion of the sale with the ponies and then they will move into the big horses um, so first and foremost I of course am going to tell you make absolutely sure if you don't already that you like and follow the Lebanon Valley Livestock Market Horse Sale page on Facebook. This is where you're going to find um, horses posting every month because again this is a monthly sale. It's on the second Saturday of every month um, so the horses will post here and any important updates um, especially like on sale day or you know leading up to the sale especially during sale week um, you're going to get your up to the minute notices here. So I do strongly recommend you like and follow them and uh, share the love, you know, give the page a share too. It certainly isn't going to hurt anything, um, but we're going to talk about online bidding. So let's get right into that. Um, first and foremost, you can bid on Horse Auctions USA one of two ways. If you are going to use your phone or your tablet, any mobile device, I'm going to strongly encourage you to download the Horse Auctions USA app. It is available both for iPhones and for Androids, um, so you can find it in the App Store and in the Google Play Store. You're going to go to the applicable store for your device, and you're going to go to the search bar for the apps, and you're going to type it just like you see it here, Horse Auctions with an S at the end, USA. And that's our little logo. It's going to pop right up, and you just click Get or Install stall depending on the device um, and you are off to the races. Um, the reason I recommend the app, uh, there's a couple of them actually. Um, number one, when you are using a phone or a mobile device, um, the app is uh, laid out to just fit it nicely. It, it navigates really nice. You can certainly use your phone with the website as well, but again, the app was made specifically um, for mobile devices, so it's just a really nice layout. Um, we have a ton of users that have the app, um, and overwhelmingly, they find it very easy to use um, and really prefer it. Um, the other nice thing about the app is if you are actively bidding or actively watching horses, um, you will get notifications if you've enabled them directly to your phone. Um, and I know um, if you're using the website, you can um, opt to get notifications as well, but they're going to go to your email. And I know not everyone checks their email like we used to back in the day. Um, so just kind of fun fact about using the app. So again, strongly recommend the app, but you do not have to use the app. If you have no desire to download an app or you're going to be on your computer, um, you can use any browser. I'm going to recommend that you use Google Chrome because it's the most up-to-date browser, but it'll work with any browser. So you're going to open up a browser tab and you are going to type bid, B-I-D, dot horse, auctions with an S at the end, U-S-A, dot com. Now, whether you are on the app or you are on the website, from here on, everything's pretty much the same. That address that I just gave you brings you to the main landing page for Horse Auctions USA. And as you can see, we've got lots going on because we do sales all over the country. But the one we're going to talk about is Lebanon Valley Livestock Market. Now, I do want to point out this is very important, um, and this is often the case. Tomorrow, Saturday, we have two sales going on in two states. And whatever sale starts on the horses earlier in the day is the one that's going to show first. So I'm out here in the Midwest, and this sale is happening in Kansas. Um, and we start horses earlier here um, than they will at Lebanon Valley. So you're going to need to scroll past Central Livestock. Um, on the computer, they're laid out like this. On the phone, they're going to be laid out like this. 
right? So the first thing you're going to see is that just scroll down. Boom, there's Lebanon Valley. Um, so that's what we want. Um, another thing while I'm over here, so pony start time, and that's the start time that this is going to deal with. Um, you, the tack is never online. Um, so the start times that you're looking at will always be for when the actual horses start. So you'll notice that the, the start time is 3 o'clock. But here on my computer, it says 2. Why? Well, again, I'm in the Midwest, so I am on Central Time. So as long as what you're watching on, um, and if you're on your computer, you'll have to make sure it's that your phone will be automatic. Um, it's going to show you this in your local time. So if you're on the East Coast, this is going to say 3 o'clock. But if you're in the Midwest, like me, if you're on Central Time, it's going to say 2. So anyway. That's just a little blurb about that because I've had people notice that and ask, and that's what it is. It's just being smart. So you're going to click View Auction underneath Lebanon Valley Livestock. So again, the schedule, guys, um, they're going to do TAC at 11 o'clock. Again, TAC is not available online. That is in-person bidding only. Um, but 3 o'clock, when we start with ponies at Lebanon Valley, it's action, go time. So when you click on View Auction, this is what it brings up over here is the auction information, all the basics. And then over here is an index, if you will, of all of the animals consigned to the auction. So you can kind of scroll down and check them all out one by one like that. Or you can do a search. So if you're on the app, you will have this little uh, icon right here for a search. If you're on the computer, you can use that little icon or you can go up here. So let's say, oh, I don't know. Let's say I only want Blue Roam. Let's just say that. And it's got to be spelled exactly the way you put it in. Or Buckskin, maybe? Yeah. If it mentions Buckskin anywhere in the listing, it's going to pop up. So it's kind of a keyword search. Um, so just kind of a fun fact, if you're looking for something very, very specific, um, you may not want to scroll through all of them. You may just want to use keyword searches and make sure you vary spelling. If you're looking for a quarter horse, you might just type quarter or you might type quarter horse like that or you might type AQHA. So just a, kind of some fun variables. So anyway, that search feature, a lot of people miss that. So I always like, kind of like to point that out. So again, it is the pony special and they have got them in every size pony from the little tiny ones right on up to large ponies. And those are these early numbers, these low numbers, right? One right on up through, I believe, 100. And then they're going to go into the riding horses. And those are the 500 tags here. Okay, so that's... That's how these are all laid out. Um, the things that say the lots that say horse or to be announced or donkey or what have you, you'll still be able to bid on those animals and you will learn what each of them is, what we know about them when they come in the ring. Um, you'll have a live feed again um, and you'll be able to see them, you know, and they'll tell you all about that animal as it comes in the ring. Um, it would be ideal if everybody had um, a full, you know, set of information on their horses, but everybody doesn't. It's just the... It's just the way it is. So let's say, oh, hey, you know, I kind of like this horse here. I want to know more. This is just an index, guys. So if you want to know more on any one of these, you're just going to click on the horse. And there he is. Now, if you see video, it means the horse has a video. So when you click on the main listing, it's going to give you all of the details. Then the first picture, and if they have a video, it will be the second thumbnail. Okay, and then you can just press play and you are off to the races. So that's a little bit about how to navigate things. Okay, so you've you've got that down. That's great. You want to get registered to bid. Let's talk about how to do that. You'll notice under every lot it says register to bid. Um, so in order to register, you're just literally going to click that under any lot and it does not matter. You can click under any single lot in any in the auction and it's going to register you for the whole auction. I'm just going to go ahead and use this one because it's right here. So I'm going to click register to bid. Now this is very important. It populates this screen and I have a lot of people who just go right to putting in their email address. If you've never used Horse Auctions USA before, that's not going to do you any good because you're not in my system yet. So you, if you're brand spanking new to Horse Auctions USA, you're going to come down here to no account, sign up here, and you're going to click that and put your information in. I do recommend that you check to receive the bidding notifications. That way, if you're bidding actively, you will get a notice when you are outbid. Um, 
So I do recommend that you check that and then continue and it's going to walk you through. Very important. When you register to bid, you are going to have to put a valid credit or debit card on file. It is an unfortunately necessary step in this day and age. We need to make sure that our bidders are uh, real people over the age of 18 with a valid working payment method. So unfortunately, that's, that's just the way we have to do it. So you will have to put a card on file. And when you do, Horse Auctions USA is going to run a pre-authorization in the amount of $500. Now, this is critical. It is not a charge, guys. We're not charging you to register to bid. doesn't cost you a thing to register to bid. It's just a pre-authorization. It's going to go on that card. If you have mobile banking, most mobile banking apps are going to send you out a notification. And usually that notification looks like a charge, and that will inevitably trigger a panicked call to myself or Victoria asking why we've charged you. So again, it is not a charge. Just the way your mobile banking notification goes out, if you actually get in your mobile banking, you'll see that $500 is pending and it falls off like it was never there, like it's just going to vanish, kind of like when you rent a car. Um, so again, not a charge, but it is going to go on there. So please don't panic when that happens. Again, just a precaution, got to protect the sale barn, got to make sure we're dealing with real people. You do not have to pay for your winning bids with your registered card, okay? Um, you're going to be paying the barn directly, um, so you'll be in contact with the Lebanon Valley Livestock Barn Office um, if you're a winning bidder, and you will make payment directly to them. Again, you do not have to use the card on file, and you'll be making payment directly to Lebanon Valley Livestock. I am going to go ahead and get into my bidder account um, that I have just for these videos. So let me get in there. I am going to strongly recommend that you click Remember Me on this device when you guys do this, okay? And I'm going to show you why in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged in, and I'm registered. Okay. Why did I tell you to make sure that you click Stay Logged In? This is why. Um, you see how now my Register to Bid prompts under all the lots have changed, and they're asking me if I want to place a bid? And now, up here in the corner, is my name. It is a very, very good habit to get into to make sure that the first thing you do when you open your app or you go to the website, the very, very first thing you do is you make sure you see your name up here. Why? Well, if you're going to participate in live bidding, um, it's an auction, so things are pretty fast-paced. I have had people in the past register to bid. You know, they get themselves all registered. They've shopped the horses. They've picked out their horse. That's the one they want. They wait all afternoon or all evening for that horse to come in and the horse comes in and the bidding starts and they go to bid and you know what they weren't logged in by the time they realize that they're not logged in and they can't bid they have to back out get over here get logged in there's a very very good chance that horse will be sold so this is why i tell you just it's a if you get into the habit of doing it you just don't run the risk of, God forbid, that happening to you. So again, open the app or get on the website. First thing you do, bam, make sure your name's there. And if you're looking at an auction you've registered for, you will be prompted to bid instead of register to bid. So you may be wondering, why does it say bid now? The auction isn't until Saturday at 3 o'clock. Well, just like you have two ways to bid, whether you're using the app or the website, you also have two different approaches to bidding. The one that is open now is early absentee or pre-bidding. This works a lot like eBay, so if you've ever used eBay, it's the same basic principle. When does this come in handy? Well, lots of times. It's Mother's Day weekend. Maybe you guys have plans that are going to prevent you from watching the sale live. Um, maybe you have to work. Your boss doesn't want you buying horses on the clock. Pretty understandable. Um, things that people don't think about, um, if you have horses, then you probably live in a more rural area. You're probably not right smack dab in the middle of town. And with rural area often comes not so hot internet service. This is critical when we're bidding live. So when we're bidding live, we do everything in our power to make sure that things on our end are running in real time with no delay, right? So Victoria will make all her adjustments to make sure that feed is getting pushed out with no delay. However, what we have no control over is how fast 
your connection is on your end. So if you're in an area of spotty service, there's a very good chance that you're going to have just enough of a delay if you're bidding live um, that you may not be successful. Um, so if you know, and I mean, you know if you have uh, poor internet at home or not, um, if you know that that's the case, then maybe you want to think about doing something like this. The one other time that I do recommend this that other people don't think about is if you are a person who finds making big decisions under pressure, like very taxing and stressful, and, and you know you, so if that sounds like I'm talking to you, then listen up. Um, buying a horse is a big deal for the vast majority of people, right? It's a big, big decision, big purchase. Auctions, again, are fast paced. Um, so if you're not super comfortable in the auction setting, if you're not very familiar with the auction setting, um, you may find when things go live and they get started that you're a little shell shocked. It's just a little too fast. And I've had people kind of freeze up when it gets to the live bidding because, um, like they may have trouble following the auctioneer, um, and it's just they're just uncertain. I mean, it's new, and again, fast paced, big purchase. Um, that that's a lot of pressure in a short period of time. So, if that sounds like it might apply to you, then you might want to think about this option as well. So, what is this option? So, this option is for you. Um, you've shopped your horse, right? Like you've got the one picked out. You've watched the videos. You've read everything. You feel good that that's the horse that you want. You've got all the time in the world between now and when the, the sale starts to think about what the most is you want to spend on this horse, right? This lot right here, this is a practice lot where it says information. This is a freebie lot, if you will. You guys can get on here. You can place some practice bids only on this lot. No other lots, just this one. Um, and get familiar with it. Um, so we're going to do that right here. And that way you can kind of see how things go. Um, so yeah, doing the absentee bidding, you can kind of think about what your maximum is. You're going to put that number in and then the computer does the work for you. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But before I do, I want to show you what happens when I just click on the bid button. Now, I do have some people that like to just kind of do this, you know, as we go, like they want to start bidding now. And like maybe they just place all the uh, the opening bids. You'll notice as you go through here are a thousand. That is the default starting bid. Okay, period, end of sentence. If you want to bid on anything before the auction starts, that is the bare bones minimum opening bid. Now, when we go live, uh, maybe there's a little critter in here that, you know, isn't going to start for a thousand. If the auctioneer sets that, um, you know, horse, donkey, pony in for, I don't know, $700, um, then when we're live, that bid increment will drop to 700 and you'll have that option. You just don't have it beforehand. And the reason for that is we we can't set individual start prices on all these horses. It would be just, a, it would be a nightmare, quite honestly. Um, So that's why it's a default start bid. So I have some people who just kind of want to pluck along and like maybe place a bid and see if someone else comes along and knocks them out. So the reason I'm going to do this now is for you live bidder. So if you're going to bid live, you're going to want to pay attention to this part here. I'm going to say, okay, yep, I want to bid on this. I'm going to click bid. So there. But have I bid yet? No, no, I have not. You see how it says confirm bid? That's because you have to click a second time to confirm your bid. What we don't want is an accidental bidding. It's not a good thing. We want to avoid that. So you must click once to bid and you must click a second time to confirm the bid. If you do not confirm the bid, you have not bid. See what it does now? There's absolutely no question that it took my bid, right? It turns green, letting me know, you know, green is go, you're good, and I am currently the high bidder, okay? So when for the you folks who are going to be bidding live on Saturday, don't forget, if it says confirm bid, you got to click again. Back to the absentee bidding. Down here, and same thing on your phones, guys, over to the right-hand side of the bid button is a little drop-down arrow. So if you click that, it's going to bring this up. Create max bid. I'm going to create a small max bid because I want to encourage you guys to use this practice lot and get in here and play and knock me out and knock each other out and get comfortable with it. But whatever number I put in here, I've had people say, well, I don't really want to put my maximum in. I mean, then the computer, you know, if my maximum's $5,000. Um, I don't want the computer to put me in for $5,000. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this a $2,000 maximum bid. Okay. So is the computer going to set me in for $2,000? It's not. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to place that bid. I'm still the high bidder and I'm still the high bidder at just $1,000. Why? The computer knows I'm the high bidder and it sees that I've placed the maximum bid and that's great. 
Um, it doesn't need to move me out of 1,000 because I'm still the high bidder. Now, if one of you guys comes along, you bid 1,500, it's going to say, oh, yep, we've got a $1,500 bid, and it's going to put me back in at 1750 right? $250 increments, 1750 is the minimum that's needed to take you out of the game, and that's what it's going to do, and so on. So the computer is acting as your agent. Its job is to bid on your behalf to get you that horse, pony, donkey, mule, whatever it is, for the lowest amount possible. So please don't be afraid to put that number in there. The computer's not going to just run with it. It's not just going to go hog wild and put you in at that, right? It's bidding on your behalf couple of things about using this. Can you get in here and increase it? You absolutely can. I have lots of people, especially with like the rural internet scenario, I have lots of people who will place their max bid and they're still logged in and watching live. That way, um, you know, they're hoping that their max bid is enough to do it. But if the live bidding exceeds their maximum bid, because they're live and they're logged in, they're able to jump right in and go to live bidding and get back in the game. So yes, you can absolutely jump back in and bid live when you've you know, use the early absentee bidding option. Um, it's not a problem. You can go in and increase it. You can do all sorts of things with it. The other big thing about this, if you place a maximum bid on a horse and that horse comes in the ring and an announcement is made that changes the information you had available to you. For example, here on this this handy dandy lot that I've, I've bid on. Um, let's just say that the horse comes in the ring and the seller says, oh, and by the way, he cribs when he's in a stall. But this information, this didn't say anything about that. So right then and there, that is a game changer. Right then and there, that has changed the information that was available to you when you bid. And so the playing field is no longer level between you and the floor bidders. We can see if there's someone who has placed a bid. It'll, it'll tell us, hey, you have a, you have an, uh, absentee bid, the computer is going to be bidding, we can opt to, to take that bid out, say, nope, delete that bid. We are going to delete that bid if an announcement is made that changes the information you had available to you. Um, we can also see if you're live watching, and a lot of times our folks who've placed those absentee bids are live, you know, so we might say, hey, Susan, you know, I just want to repeat this. Um, so they've called Spike to be a cribber, and um, the computer is telling me that you had a bid in here, so I've taken that bid out because that's new information. Um, now, if you're okay with that and that doesn't bother you, you are welcome to jump back in and go ahead and place another bid. Um, we do this, you know, not to, you know, keep you from getting the horse you wanted. We do this to keep you from getting a surprise you were not anticipating. So um, do use that option with confidence. You know, we want you to get what you thought you were getting. That's a pretty good overview of the absentee bidding. For those of you who want to watch live at 3 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to go live and you're going to be able to join us and watch just like you're there. So again, make sure you're logged in. Go ahead and click on this first lot here. And you see here where it says view live, you're going to click that. We're not active right now because Victoria is not at the barn broadcasting. Um, so it says this, but when we're live, this right here is going to turn into a video feed and you will have audio and video. If you pull this up, and you do not have audio, make sure that the little speaker icon on the feed and on your computer or your device is turned on. Make sure your volume's on. Um, if that's the case, it is possible. Um, sometimes when we start the feed, we mute our mics while we just kind of get things rolling. Um, but if it, you know, if there's activity going on, uh, make sure that your little speaker icon is on. That's the big thing. Um, so then, boom, when we're live, you'll be, you know, you'll have your bidding right here and you'll be watching. I have had people ask in the past, why can't I make this full screen? Well, here you can't make it full screen because if you make the video full screen, I, there's no way for you to bid. And this is a bidding website. Um, so you're not going to make the video feed full screen. It's going to take up all of this, but you'll still have your bid button. If you want to watch full screen, as long as there is enough internet service to do it without it um, compromising the bidding feed, Victoria will be live on Facebook as well. Um, so as long, again, as long as there's enough bandwidth for her to be able to do that, she will. And you can make Facebook full screen. So I do have some online bidders who, um, if they want the bigger view, um, will, like if they're bidding on their computer, they'll bring up Facebook on their phone. If you do that, Make sure you mute Facebook, and here's why. Facebook buffers their feed. What does that mean? Um, 
it means there's a little bit of a lag. It'll come through nice and clear, but the trade for that nice clear feed on Facebook is that you've got about a 15 or 20 second lag. It's not anything that we can do on our end. It's Facebook. It's just because it buffers. Um, so you're going to want to, if you're watching both feeds at the same time, you're going to want to mute Facebook um, because again, it'll be behind this feed. This feed is up to the minute. So yeah, you'll have real, real time audio, real time video, your bid buttons, and Victoria will be manning the computer and she'll be clicking along. And, and this button here is going to change as the auctioneer goes up. So, you know, say, you know, um, bid 1250, bid 1500, bid 1750, bid 2000, bid 25, and so on. So um, even like, again, I know some people um, have a hard time following an auctioneer's chant. If you can't, look at this number in front of you. Victoria absolutely will stay with the auctioneer. So that number is the number he's asking for. And when you're ready to bid, again, just like we did earlier, you're going to click once to bid, click a second time to confirm the bid. All right. So that's the basic blurb about bidding, and hopefully you have found this helpful. Um, a couple of key points I'm going to leave you with. Um, first and foremost, I would strongly encourage you to register for bidding before the horses start at 3 o'clock on Saturday. You can absolutely register to bid in the middle of, of the sale. It only takes about three minutes to do. So yeah, you can log in if you, you know, suddenly remember at 4.30, you know, on Saturday, um, and you want to get in there and register, you can. No problems. But if you hit a snag, uh, Victoria's up on the auction block and she can't run this feed um, and take care of everybody who's bidding and troubleshoot on the phone with you. Um, so for that reason, I do recommend that you register prior to the auction. That way, if you do hit a snag, you know, she's free to walk you through. Um, one of the, the most common problems, and again, registration is super easy and there, are, there aren't a ton of problems, but usually if someone has a problem, it is a mismatch in the address. So whatever card you're registering to bid with, make sure the address that you use matches the way it is on that card's billing statement. All right. Um, again, you know, it's it's this day and age of fraud, unfortunately, and so everyone's got kind of heightened things, and that's what most of the card companies and that's what this platform are doing. They want to make sure everything matches, you know, so we're good to go. Again, Victoria will be there. She'll be on site all day. Um, her phone number is here on the flyer. I'm going to put it in the post as well um, in the comments. Um, that number is 828 Three six eight one two six three. You can call her or text her. Um, my name is Bridget. I'm going to give you guys my phone number too, just in case um, you know Victoria gets tied up or whatever. You are certainly welcome to try and reach out to me. Um, again, I have an auction in the Midwest. Um, so after, oh, let's see, it'll be two o'clock your time. After two o'clock your time, I won't be able to answer my phone either. Um, but if you have a question in the morning and can't get Victoria for any reason, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, it's Bridget 336-904-8903. Um, we want to help you through this and help you have a good experience. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, going to be a great sale. If you haven't shopped this catalog, please make sure you do. Um, keep an eye on it for updates. Victoria is real good about keeping things updated and making additions. Um, and there'll probably be some more things added throughout the evening tonight and again throughout the day Saturday. So I hope you found this helpful and happy bidding, everyone.